recycling, particularly of metals, is a very important and critical action set for the maintenance of our civilization. This is sort of my test to see if anybody listens to the video before actually downloading it. So, for anybody who actually is listening through, I'm sure you're at least vaguely aware recycling is the recollection and remelting down or reprocessing of materials. Although society's heaviest focus is on plastics, the most critical recycling pathways are those of metals, for the simple reason that uh, metals we have a limited supply of, versus plastic, which at the moment is made out of hydrocarbons, of which there are a lot of, However, even in their absence, we could make plastic indefinitely out of various plant materials. However, as the title of the video implies, recycling metals cannot actually replace the mining of metals. It's not going to somehow make mining stop. And that is for a number of reasons that seem to be frequently overlooked. The primary foundational understanding necessary being that recycled metal is coming from something. Something that, like whether a short-term product like a can, or a long-term product like a vehicle or a piece of infrastructure, has reached the end of its service life. It's uh, being sent back to be reprocessed, melted back down, and re-refined into the metals composing it. However, this isn't some vast external continuous inflow of new material like mining is. This is material from something that has reached the end of its service life that now has to be replaced. A new one of that thing is being made effectively, not actually literally in most cases or really any case, with that exact same batch of like metal molecules, but effectively you can think of it so, at least math-wise, the new replacement for that thing is being made with the original thing, with the metal from the original thing. There's no new material. In fact, actually, which we'll touch on again later, uh, there's technically less material. There, there's actually a loss going on, as there is no such thing as 100% efficiency in any kind of regard in any process in the universe. So all recycling can do, even if 100% efficiency existed, is keep the same material in the same cycle, i.e. for each car that gets made to replace a broken down car that has reached the end of its life, that replacement car gets made out of the metal from the old car, or from a old car somewhere. The same with each new set of replacement wires, street lights, signs, rebar, beams, other infrastructure, gold, silver, and other rare metals in electronics that have reached the end of their lifespan. All it can do is keep the same already in-use material in use. It doesn't generate or add in new additional material, which is still needed, and is going to still be needed for a long time. Because everything that currently exists that we have built is not everything that is going to exist or ever be built. Quite a lot more things are going to be made, for a number of reasons in and of itself. Uh, first being the human population, currently at 7.9 billion, is still increasing. And even if one were naive enough to uh, somehow assume that uh, the entire 7.9 billion population presently on Earth all already live at developed nation or first world nation living standards with all of the uh, set amenities and infrastructure, then that still wouldn't matter because the population is still increasing, and as there are more people, more things of all varieties, from appliances to infrastructure, vehicles, everything, need to be produced for those new people. Now if one is not naive and is aware that uh, depending on uh, varying definitions and uh, spread percentages, roughly only uh, between 2 and 3 billion out of the nearly 8 billion people currently alive, live in first world or developed nation living conditions, thus leaving roughly at least 5 billion people who still need quite a lot of uh, things to be made and developed for them to allow their nations to further develop, to further elevate uh, their standard of living. Obviously, just keeping the current amount of used metal material in cycle doesn't allow for expansion into new things, expansion beyond the current amount being used more additional material needs to be brought into the system. Which means we still have to dig quite a lot of stuff up. Now you could uh, theoretically lock the system as it is now, as too many people uh, likely want to do or champion the cause of 
bring an end to mining, you theoretically could do such a thing if you were a remorseless sociopath who already lives well off enough in a developed nation and is perfectly okay with those 5 billion people uh, not being allowed to do so ever because you've locked the system in such a way, not being allowed to continue to economically rise, and being locked into their current levels of varying international poverty. Now outside of just that, there is also the negligible returns efficiency issue to contend with. That being said, in other words, you cannot recycle literally everything, literally all of a given material. Because for anybody who actually lives in the real world, you are hopefully more than well aware that reality is reality, not anybody's dream world or ideal vision of reality. In reality, things happen. There are inefficiencies, things get lost, ships sink, metals rust and oxidize, pieces, portions of them flake and fall away and are effectively lost forever, stuff gets damaged and washed away in storms, portions of each metal in the recovery process are inevitably lost with the slag, Decent weights of uh, precious metals and even rare earth metals are launched away on probes into deep space, never to return. You cannot actually get 100% of anything back. Now we have, for various metals, such as uh, aluminum, steel, and copper, managed to uh, pull off a pretty high percentages between usually like 75 and up to 90%, which is not in any way a shortcoming. That's, that's really, really good. That's a really decent rate of recovery. But the point, of course, being you can't actually recover absolutely everything. So even in an ideal scenario where the population level was locked and also everyone was already at uh, developed nation standards of living, there would still never be a state of affairs where you wouldn't have to mine anything because you cannot actually recover all of the material. And even also as a third page to all of this, many nations of the world are trying to go down the whole green energy and uh, electric vehicle and battery storage route in many ways. And those things, those require quite a number of uh, precious metals, rare earth metals, and strategic metals that uh, even if you were to uh, just grab everything we've already made over the last several decades that uses those materials, all of those things do not contain enough of uh, those metals, those materials, to make all of the uh, green energy, uh, quote-unquote, transition-related technologies and materials. Quite a significant amount of uh, those metals and materials is still needed, uh, a number of which there is not actually enough of on this earth to allow for an actual quote-unquote green energy transition, at least in the die-hard solar and wind power only view that uh, most people seem to want to take of it. And I made a special uh, separate video detailing the math behind that and the uh, different available resource amounts. So I'll include a link to that below this video if you want to see that one also. But a huge amount of uh, those materials, especially things like rare earths and lithium, still need to uh, be dug up to actually allow for at least how much of that could get done before you ran into the resource constraints. And for some of those materials, like germanium and tellurium, those do not occur in uh, ore bodies of their own, or at least in any that are even remotely concentrated enough uh, to warrant any kind of mining of them. Some of those things, like particularly those two, the only way we actually get the sizable amounts of them we need is because they are contained within other ores, usually a lot contained alongside copper and zinc. So to continue getting access to things like that, even outside of the other aforementioned factors, uh, you would actually have to just continue massive amounts of copper and zinc mining simply because the massive amounts of those regular metals that we mine is the only actual way that we're able to obtain such usable amounts of some of those rarer strategic metals. So overall tickets to board the uh, whole anti-mining train are basically purchased using delusion dollars. There is no such thing as a world where you're not mining stuff. So that's just about the end of this. So thank you everybody for sticking around and listening to this whole thing. Like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already. You're welcome to look through the dozens or hundreds of other videos I've made and watch or listen to anything you want to. You can support me through PayPal or Patreon if you want to. Please also only do so if you actually can. May God bless, protect, and save you all, and I will see you all around next time.